Khan. Yeah. <laughs> we, we probably aren't going to get to Jonathan Khan teaching. But if we had, I want you to see the beautiful backdrop <laughs> that we have prepared of, for him. And it's just I, I so know. gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Look I already took a picture of it. That's that right? gorgeous. And I want, I, I read, that's the only thing I regret because there's so much to share. But another time, but that is gorgeous. Well, All and, right. and Jerusalem is woven through this whole book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. The, me, the, the, the measuring line. <laughs> okay, the man well, with well, the measuring well, line. Well, let me tell you, first of all, the first time I ever mentioned the oracle was here. The last time I was here. Oh, wow. That was the first time anywhere because I came early. And we didn't get into it so much, but I, right. that's the first time. And I want to thank you always for that. And this is the first time actually I'm closest to the release right here. Uh, but they just told me yesterday it became number two in the world of all books by oh, God's wow. grace, by the oh, grace of God. Goodness. So pray God uses it for that. It's for believers. Believers and unbelievers too. So, yeah. all right. So yeah. before we get yeah. into the measuring line, how is the Oracle different yeah. than some of the other great books you've written? Yeah. Well, the Oracle, the Oracle is really it's the biggest mystery I've ever I've ever opened up. It's really the mystery behind everything from the past, the secret behind the future, behind what's happening now, from Moses to Donald Trump uh, to Mark Twain. I mean, everything. The, the rise of America is just part of it, you know, and it's specific where it gives exact dates, but it's, it's I've never done something that also centered when, on Israel and end time prophecy, as, but it's past, present, and future. It's also the plan of our lives, too. I mean, it's the, it's the it's like an explosion of the reality of God, really. And, it, and, it, and it's, so I've never done anything quite of this scale before, you know. Um, and it is, it's revealed through the story, as you said, and, but it's all real. It's just the story like the harbinger. There's an oracle on a mountain, and he's revealing one thing after the other, you know, the mysteries of God um, and the seven doors. So I, we'll be able probably to touch on some doorknobs, you know, by, by this. But it, but it is, it's a mind blowing. For the last, also, here's another thing. I, I did not come out with a book since the paradigm. This is two years. I've been blown away by this. I had 3,000 pages of downloads on this. And My so I've just goodness. been blown away for like two years. And so, so to get the... And the the downloads just, weren't from Google. The downloads from were Google. from God. <laughs> not from Google. I mean, I use Google <laughs> to confirm the downloads, you know. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. And, and, and basically, so it, this is the most wide-reaching thing. I mean, and it's majestic. I mean, God is majestic, and he's awesome. All right, now let's ask this yeah. question as far as the style. Is this yeah. fiction, a nonfiction, a novel, a narrative? <laughs> what is that? What's the it, style it's, of the book? Every book I've written is real, just like the Harbinger. It's right. real. But the Lord has led me in some of the books, not all, to, to reveal it or to do it through a delivery system that has a story around it. The story is just really to deliver it. So, so this is packed with, I mean, it's all real, but the story, the seven doors, is to open up the, the mystery. So this is going to make it easier yes. to understand yes. and fun to read. Well, yeah, the yeah. Style. That you're kind of drawn into it, and 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 you're opening the you know one every door has like maybe eight major mysteries. So there's like many many mysteries, uh, but we'll be able to get a taste of it, you know, now. So this morning, Joni and I had our morning coffee, a long time together, and she was sharing all kind of stuff from this book. Yeah. You oh, were wow. up early before yeah. the sun rose. Well, he's going to be on table talk. Yes. So I was reviewing. They give a summary of all the chapters. Yeah. So I got through 43. <laughs> okay. 43. Yeah, yeah, there's 60 lot. something chapters. Yes. This is a boatload of information like will blow your mind. You know what I was thinking though, as I was reading through it is that the Lord prepared you for all of this through the harbinger. Like it started with yeah, that, yeah. which was an incredible yeah, book, yeah. was so relevant yeah, for 9-11, yeah. et cetera, yeah. where you took ancient Israel and brought it into the modern day. And the correlation between those two were astounding. Yes. And so it was a New York Times yeah. bestseller forever. Yes. And it really gave you credibility mm. to prepare the way for this book. Wow. That's well, what I thought. Uh, oh, well, that's fat, well, 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 yeah. I mean, the Lord's in charge. Right? And thank you for saying that. There, there are those who are saying this is, the, you know, th they think it's the best. But I, I don't, I don't rank them. But, yeah. but the thing is that, thank you. I mean, I, it's all been the Lord. I didn't plan on any of it, you know. Um, and and there, there are so many mysteries. Well, for instance, one of the, I mean, one of the overall mysteries. I mean, you mentioned it, the Jubilee mysteries. That that that's the time of restoration, the year of restoration. God has been orchestrating the end times according to that mystery. These things happen, prophetic events, like clockwork on this 50th year. I mean, I mean, we'll, we'll see some of it. But also things happen to the exact days. There are ancient mysteries that say the days that things have to happen, even involving Donald Trump, even when he did something to the exact day. But there's also something 
called, there's a mystery that imagine there were scrolls in the world, and they opened up, when they open up the scroll, uh, the Jewish people, and they, it's a, they have an appointed word to chant. They, they say it, they proclaim it. When they chant those words at key times, the events that they say start coming true in the world. And that, uh-huh. that has been, I mean, imagine if we could find that, and it's real, it's, it's not bad, it's real, and it goes throughout the book. The, the oracle reveals that from, from about 150 years ago to right now, these words, there's even a word that was appointed on the day of Donald Trump's birth. <laughs> that is the mystery of Donald Trump. I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's uncanny, but it's, to me, I was just blown by the, it's, it's the same God of the Bible. You know, we say this, but it's real. Same God of the Bible who was in everything back then, He's just as much in everything right now. He's the God of everything. So uh, starting at the beginning, yes. I mean, you really talk a lot about 1917. You talk a lot about um, even, the even, birth of Israel in 1948, even yeah, the Six-Day six, War yeah, six in day 1967. Yep, and up to now. Just kind of go back to 1917 well, and move forward with those 50 years. And also it's very interesting about President Truman yeah, and some of the yeah. names of yeah, of the people. It was just amazing. There are people, Cyrus. There are people, Cyrus. Yeah, yeah, Cyrus. And people are people are born with names that end up being fulfilled. They're born to actually at every jubilee, every fifth year. There's a child born who's going to fulfill the central role in the next jubilee when they turn fifty. I mean, that's been happening from, from oh, then wow. till now, even till now. Um, let me do if this is good because you mentioned also the measuring line. The first jubilee, which people know, it's like a secret thing. Mm-hmm. Really, the end times as we know it begins with this first one, which is actually in 1867, which is when strange things start happening in the land. It's really God starts doing it. One is the man with the measuring line. You mentioned that, so yeah. I wasn't going to bring it up, but, but in the Bible, there's a sign of the man with the measuring line. When God's going to rebuild Jerusalem, He's going to do something. He's going to bring them back. They see the man with the measuring line. You know, mm-hmm. well, actually, a man with a measuring line appears in the land of Israel in that year, that Jubilee year, and he starts measuring out Jerusalem. And, and actually he will end up after 2000, he'll actually accidentally discover the ancient city of Jerusalem after 2000 years will come to, you know, the Jubilee says the land comes back, will come, Ju- Jerusalem came back in the same year, 1867. But there's one, there's another, there's so many mi- kind of mysteries that it's all planted and it's all coming true now. But one of them is the stranger. Uh, you mentioned that. Moses says, before God brings the Jewish people back, he says, a stranger will come from a faraway land and he'll bear witness of the desolation, that it's the land of Israel is desolate, and then God will start doing it. Well, it happens. A man comes from across the world, walks the land, bears witness to the world of the desolation of Israel, and actually uses the same words that Moses said he would say, and the man is Mark Twain. Mark Twain is part of biblical prophecy. He actually is speaking this. And when he gets to the, the, the peak of his journey, he's in Jerusalem, it's the last full day and night. Uh, they're all around the world, the Jewish people are chanting the appointed word for that day. And the word appointed for that day is the prophecy that the stranger will come to the land. And he's fulfilling it while he's hearing it in Jerusalem. But his name, you know, for 2,000 years, the Jewish people have been praying, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Um, be merciful and bring us back. 2,000 years. Hear our prayer. Be merciful. Mark Twain's name wasn't Mark Twain. It was Samuel Clemens. Samuel means the Lord has heard. And Clemens means and has been merciful. Amazing. <laughs> His whole life. And then it goes to, then if you count 50 years, you go to 1917. Next Jubilee. Did anything happen of the restoration of Israel? 1917. Now the mystery is a, whole, a world war. And you have empires falling and rising. The Ottoman Empire has the land. Muslim. They don't want Israel there. They fall. The British Empire has a revival. God brings them into the land under Christians, General Allenby, they issued the Balfour Declaration, which says the land shall be given back to the Jewish people, year of Jubilee, and then Allenby enters Jerusalem. The land, after 2,000 years, the land of Israel is given back to, Ju- pledged to the Jewish people, year of Jubilee. So there's no way that's coincidence that it happened plan it. during the year of Jubilee. No, you couldn't, you can't plan the war. I mean, nobody could have planned that. And, and even the people who were in power, Lloyd George and Balfour, they're Christian or, you know, they, they love Israel. They, they, God had the other government crumble just before the year of Jubilee came because they weren't for Israel. They're lifted up for that moment. I'll give you a quick, a quick mystery from this. And every, every door has about, again, about eight. I was, the, there's a number in Daniel, that's the num- a prophetic number. It says when this number, it's, it's the number 1335, and it's the number that signals that the occupier of Jerusalem or occupier of Israel, the hostile, they have to leave, 1335. Well, the number 1335, all this starts appearing throughout Israel in that year. In 1917, all through the Middle East, on coins, it turns out it's the Muslim year 
is the year that da- comes out to the number that Daniel says that they have to leave the land. Uh, and, and, and it comes out to a very day when the Balfour Declaration is approved to go. So even the, the number of the end, and all these things happen like clockwork. I mean, Marcus, all, and it, now there's another jubilee. You mentioned, you mentioned the birth of Israel. Well, the, the, I know, and guys, I know I'm talking to the choir about Israel. You are, and one of the things I'm yeah. going to say before you, see, yeah. you, you talk about how the reverse is taking yes. place. Yes, yes. Because yes. Israel lost everything. Yes. And the, everything was taken away for how many years? Oh, well, 2,000 years. For 2,000 yeah. years. Wow. So, now it's like the reverse is happening. It's exactly the reverse. That because mm-hmm. well, Jubilee, when you come back to your land, you're reversing when you lost. And that mystery actually, in, in one of the one of the mysteries, is going to give the exact day of the sixth day of, of Jerusalem coming back. I mean, from an ancient reversal, it's amazing. From a, it's amazing. But yes, mm-hmm. the whole thing is. Re- Listen, salvation is reversing. He's reversing the fall. You know, and, and, rem- and now Herzl, Theodore Herzl, he's the founder, the visionary of Israel. People don't know before when he was a kid, he had a secret. He had a dream, and he saw the Messiah. And the Messiah said, this child is going to prepare the way for my coming. He's going to prepare my people. And we know Jesus is not coming back until his people come back to Jerusalem. We know that. Wow. So this has to happen. But, but he, he gathers. See, he says, today I founded the Jewish state. Now, everybody's going to, he says, everybody will laugh at me. But he says, in 50 years, Jubilee, 50 years time, the whole world will know it. When did he say it? 1897. Count 50 years takes you to 1947, the year that Israel is voted back into the world. To the, but I look deeper. The resolution on the UN that voted, that brought Israel back into the world, the plan, has a date on it. It's September 3rd. I went back, Herzl wrote the prophecy on September 3rd. It's 50 years to wow. the exact day. Is that not amazing? Exact day. Now, now talk about exact. Yeah. You know, there, when Israel came back in the world, Ben-Gurion gives a declaration. It's, it's on Friday night. Then it comes back at midnight, Saturday. So it was a Sabbath. That means there was an appointed word. For the, appointed from ages, ages past for, May, for that day. May, for, what was it? Any significance? The appointed word was read all, chanted all over the world. It says, God, it says, it's in that day, I will raise up the fallen tabernacle of David. I will put my people back in the land. I will end their exile and, and I will rebuild right. the yeah. nation. Oh, so they're, they're chanting the resurrection of Israel as it's taking place. I mean, who could put that together? Talk about God being in charge of everything. And I'll give you a, another really cool thing from that. There's a code. What, I put it in there. It's called the Jubilee Code. From Moses, the first time that God ever told Israel, you shall return. It, it's, the, it's the law of Jubilee. You shall return to your ancestral land. Could there be a mystery there? You shall return in Hebrew is just one word, tashuvu. And but now, and you know it, but I realize that in Hebrew, every letter has a number, has a numeric, because that's how they do the dates. If you write a date down, you, in Hebrew, you write it down in letters. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, because everything has. So, Tashavu, when you put it together, it comes out to a number and, it comes, and identifies a year. It comes out to 1948. You shall return. Wow. 1948, all the way back from Moses. And tell everybody, many know, but some don't. What is the significance of 1948? It is the rebirth of Israel. It says, you shall return. And in that, it gives the date. And in that year, Israel returns to the land, to ancestral possession. I mean, so like, mind-boggling. Like you said, there was, there was that season where God's hand was really on uh, the British and even yes. those in leadership. Yes. But at some point, that switch right. changed yes. and moved to America. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the whole, the, the fact that we live in America and it's a, it is what it is, is all part of this mystery because you have the Ottoman Empire, they're against the return. God has them crumble. Then he raises the British. They go because they're for it. So to the peak of their power. But then they, in between the war, they turn against it. And what happens? The great British Empire turns to nothing, and God raises up America. So, and that's where you have Truman, who, who he puts him right at that moment, and Truman's whole life is going to follow the mystery of Cyrus. He's the first Cyrus. In fact, before he dies, he will say, I am Cyrus. Amazing. And when he is, <laughs> one last thing, <laughs> when, for this part, when, when, you know, God always starts the next mystery at the end of the other one. So when Cyrus, when Truman is reigning, the next Cyrus, American Cyrus is born. Donald Trump is born in the reign of the first Cyrus. He's going to be another Cyrus. I mean, it's amazing. To this day. So tell <laughs> a little bit about what Harry Truman did as far as even meeting with the leadership of Israel and yeah. his kindness towards Israel. Yeah, well, tr- well, Truman loved Israel. Truman read the Bible several times. As getting, and, and so and the thing is that if, if Roosevelt had stayed in power, Israel probably never would have been born. But just at the exact time, Roosevelt dies. And he just appointed Truman 
th less than three months before. So all of a sudden, Truman is, is lifted up to be the most powerful man on earth. So like Cy Truman, you know, Cyrus came to reign for 30 years, 30 years. Truman reigned from 1923 to 1953, 30 years. Tr Cyrus came to world power when he was 60. Truman turns 60, he comes to world power. And Truman sends, though people don't know this, he, not only did he recognize Israel 11 minutes after it was born, like Cyrus, but he sends word to the, to the British Empire, he says, let those exiles from the Holocaust go home. Just like Cyrus, just like Cyrus. And the day he did it, it was a Friday, the appointed word around the world was God saying, then I shall gather you back from the ends of the earth back home. And so Truman, and then, then the chief rabbi of Israel comes to the White House and he says to Truman, he says, God puts you in your mother's womb for that moment that you could be part of this prophecy. And Truman says, Truman says he, he starts, opens up and he starts reading about King Cyrus. And Truman starts breaking down and crying. The first Amazing. time. He and was he, a tough guy. He was a that. tough guy, but just like, listen, Trump's a tough guy. And, he, and his words weren't always the right thing. But he was used. I mean, these people are born for the moment. God is sovereign over everything. Okay, so I want to make this point to our viewers because we're not here today endorsing any political party or mm -hmm. politician That's right. or That's right. office holder. But here's something you need to know. The Bible is clear that God raises up kings or yes. leaders. He appoints. Yes. And he can bring them down. And he doesn't always pick or choose righteous ones. That's right. God can That's even right. use an unrighteous leader. Is that That's true? Right. Cyrus, the, you know, the prophecy of Cyrus says, you didn't know me. You don't know me, but I'm using you. You know, and, and with every Cyrus, you know, there's always somebody to say, hey, Truman didn't realize it, but he says, you were used by God. In fact, in fact, this goes with what you just said, and you mentioned, if you take the Jubilees and you go from 1867, 50 years, 1917, the big picture, go 50 more years, and what year does it take you to? 1967. Anything happen? Any restoration? Jesus said, I'm not coming back until they have Jerusalem. So 1967, it wasn't Israel that started that war. They got Jerusalem, six-day war, and Jerusalem, prophecy. And, you know, Jesus said it. It will be trampled down until then. But they didn't start it. You know who started it? The Soviet Union, the godless, anti-god. They sent wow. a false word to the Arab people saying, Israel's going to attack you. All false. By doing that, they set in motion the Six-Day War, which brought about biblical prophecy. Stalin, Karl Marx, they brought about biblical prophecy. I mean, all from that. I mean, I may, and, you know, and then... And they were surrounded like, oh, yeah. in the natural. It didn't like there was any way that Israel could defend itself. So to make no. sure you understand, that's when yeah, you East that. and West oh. Jerusalem were reunited as one city. And that's when, for the first time in 2000... Listen, the Jubilee says everyone shall return to their possession. First of all, the Israeli soldiers, you're watching it. Actually, the last time I was here was June 5th, which was actually the, the anniversary. But they enter the gates of Jerusalem, everyone shall return home. They go to the wall, the soldiers are weeping. But there's a mystery, because I see you showed somebody there who's part of the mystery. Um, and that is, there's something called the Day of the Lions, you know. And that is that, there's a, I looked and there's a prophecy where God says, it says the Lord will fight for Jerusalem like, a lot, like the lion and the young lion. It says lion and young lion. So when Israel took Jerusalem, I mean, they, they weren't actually, they weren't even trying to take Jerusalem. They were trying to defend themselves. They, they told Jordan, stay out of the war. But Jordan said, no. So now Jerusalem's Even though God had promised that to Abraham, yes. it was rightly there from yeah. the beginning. And, and, if, and if Jordan listened and stayed out of the war, the prophecy wouldn't be true. So even then God uses that. So the, th the man they sent to circle the hills of Jerusalem, which opens the doors, Colonel Ben-Ari, his name in Hebrew means the lion. The, wow. the man who was in charge of the war for Jerusalem was, was Arik Regev. He gives, the, he gives the word, take it now. His name means the lion. The man who receives the word is Arik Achman. You're going to see one on there. Arik Achman, he's the intelligence officer. He's, his name means the lion. And then he gives it to the commander who's standing on the Mount of Olives. You just, he was just there in that picture. He's on the Mount of Olives. His name is Mata Gore. He's the hero of Jerusalem of the Six Day War. He tells his men, we gotta go now. They go into the gates, he takes them in. His name is different, Gore. It means the young lion. The prophecy says the lion and the young, God will fight as the lion and the young lion. The first two in the gates and the first two people on the Temple Mount is Colonel Gore and Arik Achman, the, the guy who got the word. Their names in Hebrew mean the lion and the young lion. Amazing. <laughs> it says they will fight for the mountain. It's God. Incredible. And what, what gate do they go through? I was thinking about that. The lion's gate. The, the lion's, lion's gate. gate. And so and now, who could plan it? Because all these kids, all these children, they had to be named lion when they were born. You know, And so they, they go through this for the exact moment. And what it's telling us, I mean, you know it, but it's, it's not just a theory. God is saying, listen, God, it was God who was fighting as a lion. And, and the Lord, when he first came, when 
Messiah first came through those gates, it was during Passover as a lamb, it's telling you when he comes back to Jer this Jerusalem, he's coming as a lion. The lion of the tribe of Jesus. Yes. The other interesting thing you t talked about wow, was bringing, you bringing in the rabbis. Yes. So talk about oh, that, because wow. that was really powerful as well. Oh, there's so the oh, Six-day war. Yeah, yeah. You mean the, the priest or the Nazir or the? Oh, there's, yeah. so, there's so many mysteries. Well, one is that yeah, they send. There, there's a guy who, who there's a rabbi who gets there with the with the first soldiers, and he sends for his father-in-law, and, and he says he says this guy he he just he's a rabbi. He loves Jerusalem, so they bring him on a on a jeep, and they also bring another rabbi famous, bring him on a jeep uh, to Jerusalem. Now, now the thing is, whenever Israel returns to like Jerusalem or the land or, or the Jubilee when land comes, there's always the, there always the priests have to be part of that. It turns out his father-in-law was a priest of Israel. The other rabbi was also a son of Aaron. And the, and the guy who drove the Jeep the, was also a son of Aaron. So at the moment is that, and also- The shofar. Also, okay, that's it, okay, that's, that's okay. Yeah. All right, this is, yeah. When the Jubilee comes, what, and what's, what happens? The, the, it says the trumpet shall sound and the land shall return. So is there any key moment like at, the, at these key moments, it had never happened that the actual trumpet sounded. At the moment that Israel enters the gates, the soldiers enter the gates and they enter the Temple Mount, they hear the sound of the shofar, the sound of Jubilee. Why? A guy is sounding it. Now, he wasn't doing it to, to fulfill the prophecy, but it sounds. The guy who sounds it is named, is, is, is a rabbi. And the, the th amazing thing is, the Jubilee says that the land returns to its original state. So what was the original state of the Temple Mount? It was a threshing floor. David bought it as a threshing floor. In Hebrew, the word for threshing floor is Goren. The man who sounded the trumpet is named Rabbi Goren, Rabbi Threshing Floor. He's born with that name to sound it on the mountain, and he was born in 1917, uh, born during the Jubilee. Incredible. He is now 50 years old. That is amazing. And he's, sound, he's sounding the 50. He's sounding the, you know the 50th year on the threshing floor. And, and I look deeper, and his name Goren has another meaning. It doesn't just mean the threshing floor, it also means the horn. Rabbi Horn sounds the horn. <laughs> <laughs> and, and on top, I'll throw That's this in, right. this, but on top of it, you know, in the Jubilee, it says everyone returns. Now, who, who had that, that, that temple mount? It was David who bought it, and it was Solomon who established it, who dedicated it. David and Solomon. The, the, he's the, this rabbi is the one who sent for his father-in-law. They're both standing there at that day. His name, the rabbi's name is Shlomo, that's Solomon, and his father's name is David. <laughs> so it's David and Solomon standing. I mean, who could put all this together? Amazing. You know, only God, only God. And it's going to lead to our time. It's going to lead to so our talk time. talk about, because I know yeah. people want to hear about the here and now. Okay, yeah. Well, this is the, and th this is the, now the fifth door is the present. Okay, so, so here's the thing. One thing, when they came back to Israel, one thing they never got, which you get during the Jubilee, is they get the legal right, recognition, legal right to the land. Well, the, Israel, you know, Jerusalem's the one capital that has never been recognized by the world. The Bible says it's going to be the center of controversy in the end. We know that. It has to be. But it never happened. Did it ever happen? Well, we all were here. We witnessed it. It did happen. It happened. It was the United States of America under Trump who then issued the Jerusalem Declaration, which is the first time, in not, first time not only in modern times, first time since ancient times that any world power has recognized Jerusalem. And it's gonna, wow. it's gonna follow the pattern of Cyrus. If I look, there's, a, there's so many mysteries, even, even the wording of it's gonna follow the pattern of Cyrus. But when, did, when is the next Jubilee if we count the years? 1967, 50th year, turns out to be 2017 the very year that the Jerusalem wow. Declaration goes forth. It's amazing. And, it, and he does it, and now listen, I say, I say this, you know, Donald Trump is not, I'm sure he's not studying Leviticus. <laughs> he's not studying Hebrew, yet he's doing it. Just like, and the thing is, he does it just before the Jubilee ends. I mean, he gets in there just before the Jubilee ends. But the, here's, now here, now this is like, I don't know what to call this, because, and, and as this, in the last Jubilee, the central guy was that Rabbi, Rabbi Goren, Rabbi Horn. What happens in the Jubilee? The trumpet sounds. We say, you know, the, the Jubilee, you get the year of Jubilee, trumpet is going to be the main thing you're saying. What, is our, what does the president's name mean in, in English? It means the trumpet. So the mystery of Trump, when does he come to power? Year of Jubilee. He comes in 2017. It says the trumpet shall sound or the trump shall sound. I get and, and so the trump starts out. When did he, when did, when does it start sounding? He starts sounding in January. He hasn't stopped sounding, by the way. He hasn't stopped tweeting. We wish sometimes he would. But, <laughs> but it, sound, it says the That's trump, funny. the trump <laughs> shall sound throughout the land. Yeah, I wish he had toned that tweeting down. I know. I, I know. Folks, listen, uh, <laughs> I, I was honored by the White House to be there at the dedication yes. of the 
embassy. Embassy There's in Jerusalem. Picture, right? Yes. And uh, on behalf of Daystar. So that was historic. That's part Two of... Two days before Rebecca's wedding. So. That is part of prophecy. I mean, I actually said that part of prophecy. Because, well, let me, let me think. Not only, yeah, he sounds, he, the Trump sounds. And what happens on the Jubilee when the Trump sounds a year of Jubilee? The land returns, the possession returns. And so it ex happens like clockwork. You know, but there's another, we mentioned Cyrus. I'm just a one mystery here that it's deep, and, but it's really amazing, cool. You know, when Cyrus gave that declaration, the, the prophet Jeremiah says it happened at the end of 70 years. We know 70 years of exile. So he says you can return. He recognizes Jerusalem. 70 years. So did Trump, when Trump did it, he did it in 2017. Did that, was that at the end of any 70-year period? Not that he's planning it. Go back 70 years. It takes you to the year 1947, the year Israel is voted into the world. So Trump's declaration comes at the end of that period. But I looked deeper. I looked at the, what was the exact day that Israel was voted into the world. In Hebrew, it was... The, eight, the 17th day of the month of Kislev. Kislev 17, okay. So if you go forward 70 years from the day now, to, you get to Kislev 17, it says after the 70 years, so Kislev 18 is, marks the end of that. When did that fall? It fell on December 6, 2017 the exact day that Trump issues the Jerusalem Declaration to the day Incredible. the king shall, shall issue the declaration. There's no way that that is coincidence. No, and you, no, and you mentioned something, I was gonna, but you mentioned, you know, Cyrus in the declaration speaks of building a house. Well, Trump also speaks of building a house, which was the embassy where you were there. Well, that happened five months later. But when you look at that, when you were there on that day, that was May 14th. That was exactly 70 years from the birth of Israel. So you've got, God, I mean, everything. Oh, my gosh. God is the church of everything. Well, folks, I, I'm just getting chill bumps, <laughs> even though I'm sitting under these hot television lights. You know what? I think about that verse. I love quoting this verse. He who knows the end from the beginning. God had this all planned yes. out. He had it all mapped out. And what I'm excited about is that we get to be alive, perhaps, at the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, the second yeah. coming. And to think that Daystar is there in yes. Israel at Mount Zion. And ladies and gentlemen, if God knows the end from the beginning, not only can he orchestrate all this stuff because he already knows what's going to happen because yes. he's dictating it, he knows his great plan Yes. for your life. Yes. You may be struggling. You may be frustrated. You may be saying, God, where are you? Why am I going through all this? But he who knows the end from the beginning, he knows where he's taking you. He yes. knows where he's bringing you through to where he's bringing you to. <laughs> and if you need prayer today, call the number that's on the screen or go to Daystar. Dot com. Okay, well, the sixth door <laughs> takes us to the dark jubilee. Yes. So okay. let's talk about yeah, that. Now the sixth a door, dark jubilee. I've yeah, never heard of that. I know. I know. Yeah, I mean, I didn't either. Uh, it, it is, this is now, the sixth door opens up the door to the future. And, and what, what does this tell us about the future? Um, one of the, the mystery of the end times is really, the, the jubilee is really, really is the centerpiece because it's about return. You shall return, everyone shall return to what they, what they left. Well, well, where were the Jewish people at the beginning of the age? They were in Israel, so they have to return. They were in Jerusalem, they gotta return. But it's not just Israel. This mystery is for everybody. You, you got, you, you're talking about, it, it's ultimately personal too. I mean, I mean, we'll get to it, because it touches, it's about everybody's life, absolutely. I'm glad actually you mentioned that, because that's the whole thing. But the thing is that it touches the whole world. If, where was the world 2,000 years ago? It wasn't Christian, it was unchristian, it was non-Christian, it was pagan, it was anti-Christian, anti-Israel. The mystery is the world is returning to its original state. Hmm. The world, that's why we're watching every day in culture, mainstream culture, what's it doing? It's returning to unchristian, it's returning to the pagan, pagan values, pagan morality. It's returning to, to coming against Christians. We're watching it, I mean, and that, but it's all part of the mystery. The, it has to happen. Now, it doesn't mean there can't be revival. There can be revival, but the mainstream culture, that's just know it, it's returning. But the other side of this mystery is, and this is, this is another mystery in the sixth door, and it's different, is that is where was the church, where were we 2,000 years ago? We were in Jerusalem too, and the church was not like, it wasn't established, didn't have a lot of money, it wasn't, it wasn't comfortable. It was radical, Book of Acts, revolutionary. It was actually connected to its Jewish roots. It was world-changing. It was the apostles, the disciples, the Holy Spirit. 
Well, that's the other mystery. The mystery is that each shall return to our possession. We will, the, God is calling the church in the end yes, times to return to its possession, which is the book of Acts. That's, that's right. why you've had the most outpouring of the Spirit at, in these days. Thank that's God. why, so, so yeah, we'll see people falling away. But those who stand, you're going to become like the di- apostles, like the disciples. We who stand, God will anoint that one. The, and in fact, it goes together because the apostles didn't live in a Christian time. They lived in an anti-Christian time. But that helped them become radical. God is calling all of us. So the God says, and to you out there, so the Bible says that the, the the eyes of the Lord are searching the entire earth looking for the one whose heart is completely his. He'll lift that one up and show power to that awesome. one. You be that one. I want to be that one. We want to be that one. But that's the good news. You know, that, that is the great thing. And but the other thing is, where is this all heading? You know, because what's the peace? You know, the Jubilee is that the owner of the land leaves the land and then returns, comes back. Who's the owner of the land? Who's the owner of Israel? Messiah. Jesus yes, is. Yes. So this all the mystery all begins when his feet leave Jerusalem. And that's why, so that's why, you know, even the Jewish people, even though that most haven't followed him, they're following him because they leave Jerusalem. The world leaves Jerusalem. The church leaves Jerusalem. But in the end, this is about now, everything is returning back like a reverse. Yes. Everything coming, playing in reverse. Including him. Yes, because, yes. Because, because they're coming back to Israel because someone else is coming back to Israel. They're coming back to Jerusalem because someone else is coming back. So all these things are also telling you not, not only how real God is, but also how true it is that Messiah is coming. Because all these things are preparing the way. And so, it's, so what's the ultimate jubilee? The king was separated from his kingdom, his people. But he's, the king is coming back. When he comes back, Jubilee. Ladies and gentlemen, the book just came out yesterday. You want to get a copy, go to Amazon.com to order it online or go to Barnes and Noble or whatever. I just tell you one thing. This is All only, right. there's only today, pretty much today, and it's only days, I mean, is that if people go to the oracleiscoming.com, the oracle, they will get not only the oracle, they'll get $80 worth of my books Incredible. on top of it. If you go to the oracleiscoming.com, and uh, they will get all $80 worth on books as free gift. Um, it's going to run out because the release is there, but you can do it. You, you, there it is. There's the website, the oracleiscoming.com. Yeah. Now listen to me. Is the music, I want you to play that song. I love that song, There's Room at the Cross for You. Amen. We are living, I believe, in the very Mm. final climactic moments of human history. Jesus is about to come. And I want to hear more of this, but I heard the voice of the Lord say, warn my people. Yes. Give the people an opportunity that are not right with me, that are not on fire, that are not close to me. Yes to move in close to me today, and I will reveal myself to them. And the other word that came to me was that in the midst of the blackest darkness of night, the light will shine yes. the brightest. Yeah. Power went off in our home last night That's twice. Right. Yeah. We had our candles, we had our flashlights, it's true. and boy, it was amazing how it would light up, just that little <laughs> bit of light. Some of you are watching today and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I've never heard of such things ever. There's no way that the Bible is uh, coincidence. (laughs) God has orchestrated and planned and maneuvered and plotted every single thing throughout history. Surely he must be coming soon. Yes. Are you ready? If Jesus were to come in the next five minutes, would you be ready? If he came for you through death, if you died, if your heart stopped suddenly, are you ready? If you don't know for sure, you can know for sure. The scriptures are clear. These things are written that you may know that you have eternal life. So if you're not sure today, then you're probably not ready and you need to be ready. Maybe you've never known it. Or maybe you knew him before, but you've grown cold and you've gone far from God. Today, God has sent Rabbi Jonathan Kahn to awake you and stir you by these mysteries in this book called The Oracle. Yes. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I want you to say this prayer after me Mm -hmm. to God. Either say it out loud or say it in your heart, but say it to God and mean it. Would you pray this after me? Dear Jesus. Dear Dear Jesus. Jesus. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe you died, you died on the, the cross, cross for me. And you shed your blood for my sins. And you, you shed, shed your blood, your blood for, for my sins. sins. I know that I'm a sinner. I know, I know that, that I'm a sinner. sinner. And I've made many mistakes. And I've made many, many, many mistakes. mistakes. But I'm asking you to forgive me today. But I'm, I'm asking, asking you to forgive me today. me today. Come into my heart right now. Come, Come into, into my, my heart, heart right, right now. And be the Savior of my soul. Be the Savior of my soul. And the Lord of my life. And the Lord of my life. 
I accept you now by faith. I accept, I accept you, you now, now by, by faith. faith. Thank you for loving me. Thank, thank you for, for loving me. me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for forgiving me. me. And thank you for saving me. Thank, thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. All right. If you prayed that prayer, it's the most important decision of your life. It was a great first step. Now I want you to make a second step. The Bible says you are made an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. That's what Jesus did on the cross when He suffered and died and shed His blood. And by the word of your testimony. When you testify of Jesus as your Lord. When you share with somebody, I ask Christ into my life. When you tell somebody, I ask Jesus to be my Savior. If you prayed that prayer to God and you meant it, you were sincere. I want you to go to the phone right now and tell one of my prayer partners. I have a gift, a free book in English or in Spanish. I'll send it to you. No obligation. Your name won't go on a mailing list. You won't be solicited in any way. Or you can go to daystar.com and click on comments and say, I prayed that prayer with Marcus. Please send me the free book. Now, why is it important that you testify? Because if you don't, within 24 hours, the devil will lie to you. He'll say all you did was say a few words. All you did was have an emotional experience. He'll try to talk you out of your very salvation. But if you say, God, I'm not ashamed to tell somebody. I'm not embarrassed to share that information. I'm not afraid to let somebody know that I ask you into my heart today. Call that number right now and say, I prayed that prayer, Joni. Amen. You know, it's interesting. I was tapping him because I felt the same thing. I knew there were some of you watching that you needed to pray this prayer. You God's needed time to be right for with you. The Lord. We only have a couple of minutes. How, how close are we? to the coming of the Lord. I know we don't know dates, we know seasons, but based on everything you've there, 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 well, we Well, we are definitely all, we are heading there and all these things are coming together. And even the apostasy we see is part of the, the coming of the Lord. Um, there's a few possibilities. I mean, uh, one, is, one is linked to the Jubilee. One is linked to the, the timing of the Jubilee. Another is linked to the beginning and end of the age. But we are closer every day and, and there's not one day that goes by where we don't see a sign of the apostasy in the end and yet Israel being restored. One of the mysteries that we just mentioned about where you mentioned with a house in Jerusalem. I believe that that house is, that house is in the Bible is linked to the temple. So that embassy, I believe, is a sign and the whole thing that Trump did for the temple to come. So that's coming. So we are close and we have to be ready. I'm so glad you said that. Yes. That's how I, that's why I got saved. I was an atheist. That's how I got saved. Yes. And also to say that, as you mentioned, and I'm so glad you took it to the heart. The, the, at the end, I don't know if you reached the end of it yet, Joni, but at the end, it goes totally personal because God has a plan for our life. The same God of Israel God. is the God of your life. The God is real. His word is real. And and if he works everything together for Israel, he'll do it for your life. And if he is re the restorer of Israel, he's the restorer of your life. So this is also about the plan of God for your life. God wants to restore you. You yes. may have been far from him, but he's restoring you today. If you prayed yes. that prayer, it's important. It's imperative. It's vitally necessary that you share it. Let God.